This is part two of the Lateral Acceleration MATLAB example demo. In the first part, we introduce the background and row to function to compute lateral acceleration given velocity, the curve radius, and g. In this part, we'll do some vector manipulation to see which velocities correspond to lateral acceleration within a certain range. In the automotive engineering world, a lot of analysis is done at low accelerations. The generally accepted upper limit for small lateral accelerations is around 0.4 g. Let's say that in our analysis, we need the vehicle to be between 0.1 g and 0.2 g. Therefore, we need to find what speeds cause the vehicle to have a lateral acceleration within this range. We can do this in two ways, by using a for loop and by using logical indexing. Using a for loop might be the first method you think of since it's the most intuitive. However, logical indexing is much more efficient and elegant, so I'll start by doing the logical indexing way first, and then I'll show you how to get the same results with a for loop. So what exactly is logical indexing? In logical indexing, also referred to as vectorization, you find the elements of a vector or matrix that correspond to a specific condition. It eliminates the need for things like for loops and if statements, which can be computationally costly if your dataset is large. I worked on a project where I had to sort through about 3.5 million data points. I needed to use logical indexing to do my data processing. Using a for loop actually crashed MATLAB because it just took way too long to process every single data point. Logical indexing is best described with an example, so let's dive back into the demo. Like I just said, you can use logical indexing every time you are subjecting a vector or matrix to a condition. In this case, we want to find the speeds which induce a lateral acceleration between 0.1g and 0.2g. To actually solve this problem in MATLAB, we should work backwards. We should see which accelerations are between 0.1g and 0.2g, then find the corresponding speeds. Let's make a variable called valid. Let's break the statement down piece by piece, starting with excels is greater than 0.1. Just a quick reminder, we're doing 0.1 instead of 0.1 times g, because our accelerations are already in terms of g. If we type this into the command window and run it, we get a 1 by 31 logical array. A logical array is a special type of MATLAB vector which contains only zeros or ones, as you can see. The greater than symbol is called the logical operator, hence the resulting logical array. Logical indices are positional. In other words, the position of each one in the logical vector determines which element is being referred to in the original vector. This statement goes element by element through the excels vector and sees if it's greater than 0.1. If true, it returns a 1. If not, it returns 0. So this is basically saying, is 0.051 greater than 0.1? No, so return 0. 0 0.0617 is less than 0.1, so return 0, and so forth. We see that the first five elements in the excels array are all less than 0.1, so the first five elements in this statement are 0. The sixth element in the statement is 1, which means that the sixth element in the excels array is greater than 0.1. We can verify this in our excels array, and we see that 0.1147 is in fact greater than 0.1. In the first part of this demo, I mentioned the importance of keeping track of variables as dimensions, and you definitely want to do that here since logical indexing can be tricky. This is a 1 by 31 logical array. Note how the excels vector is also a 1 by 31 array. This is not a coincidence. A logical array will be the same size as the original vector. Okay, so let's look at the second half of this line. If we copy and paste this into our command window and run it, we get another 1 by 31 logical array. Here, the first 10 entries are all 1, meaning the first 10 entries in the excels vector are all less than 0.2. Always check your original vector to make sure your code works properly. If we go back to the excels array, we see that the first 10 elements are all less than 0.2. If we compare the output from this statement to the output from this statement, we see that we get two different vectors. This makes sense since we're subjecting the excels vector to two different conditions, excels is greater than 0 
and excels as less than 0.2. We just examined both logical statements, but what happens if we combine them? That's what this entire statement is doing after all. This ampersand means AND in MATLAB. If we copy and paste the entire statement into the command window and run it, we get another 1 by 31 logical array. Because we included the ampersand, or the AND, we're telling MATLAB to check both conditions simultaneously. MATLAB will return a 1 if an element in the excels array is both greater than 0.1 and also less than 0.2. If both conditions are not met, it returns a 0. If one condition is met but the other isn't, MATLAB will still return a 0 because the AND means both statements must be true. You can see here that elements 6 through 10 all contain a 1, so elements 6 through 10 in the excels vector are between 0.1 and 0.2. The rest of the logical array is zero, so the rest of the elements in the excels vector don't meet both requirements. And once again, we can confirm that by checking the original array, and we see that elements 6 through 10 are between 0.1 and 0.2, and every other element falls outside that range. Hopefully, this entire statement makes sense now. Okay, so valid returns the locations within the excels array that satisfy the conditions we imposed but it doesn't tell us what the actual lateral acceleration values are. To obtain the values, let's make a new vector called a underscore valid. This line might cause some confusion because the first element in the valid vector is zero, so you might be tempted to think that this causes an error because excels of zero doesn't make sense. However, MATLAB is smart enough to know that valid is a logical vector, and because of that, this form of addressing works a little differently. If we use the valid vector to index the excels vector, which we did here, it will return the values of the location in excels that correspond to a location with a 1 in valid. When we run the code, we can see that a valid contains accelerations between 0.1 and 0.2. These elements happen to be the 6th through 10th elements of the excels vector, which should make sense because the 6th through 10th elements of the valid vector are 1. So that's half of the problem. We found which accelerations are between 0.1g and 0.2g. Now we need to find the corresponding velocities. We can do something really similar. Let's store the valid velocities in a variable called v underscore valid. and we get the velocities that correspond to accelerations between 0.1g and 0.2g. Once again, these are the 6th through 10th elements of the velocities vector. Now that we have these, let's plot them on top of the original graph. I'm plotting the special velocities and accelerations using black diamonds, as indicated by the KD. I also made the diamonds look a little bit thicker by increasing the line width to 2. Lastly, I'd like to do everything we just did but with a for loop. Logical indexing can be used in lieu of for loops to write more elegant code, but there are also some cases where it's actually easier to use logical indexing because the for loop is just awkward. Let's start by creating two new vectors to store the valid accelerations and velocities. a underscore valid2 and v underscore valid2 have the same dimensions as a underscore valid and v underscore valid, which is 1 by 5. In each of these lines, we're multiplying by 0 to pre-allocate the vectors. This will save a bit of memory and is a good technique you should incorporate into your codes. We also have a count variable, which will be used later in the for loop. Let's go ahead and construct this for loop. We want to step through each of the values in the excels array and check if it's between 0.1 and 0.2. If true, we store that acceleration and the corresponding velocity in a underscore valid2 and v underscore valid2 respectively.
Let's break this down, starting with the if statement. Here, we're using a double ampersand, but when we did it with logical indexing, we only used a single ampersand. This relates to something called short-circuiting behavior. Feel free to read the MATLAB documentation, but the gist is single operators apply to every element in the array, whereas double operators apply to scalar conditions. We don't have an else or else if statement following the if statement, but that's perfectly okay because no action is taken if the particular acceleration we're examining doesn't fall between 0.1 and 0.2. In the for loop, we need to keep track of two differently sized vectors simultaneously. First, we have our loop counter i, which keeps track of where we are in the excels vector, which is 1 by 31. But we also need to keep track of where we are in the a valid 2 and the v valid 2 vectors, both of which are 1 by 5. This is the purpose of the count variable. Count indexes are a valid 2 and v valid 2 vectors. We start our counter at 1 outside the loop, then we increment it every time we find a valid acceleration and velocity. Finally, let's plot a valid 2 and v valid 2. And don't forget to add a legend. v valid 2 and a valid 2 appear as magenta squares. From the overlap in the plot, we can see that we get the exact same answer as the vectorized version, as expected. But in order to get this answer, we had to use a for loop that was kind of awkward to write because we had to keep track of two differently sized vectors at once. On the other hand, vectorization took three lines of code and we didn't need to use any for or if statements. When I'm writing code, I try to vectorize as much as possible. The learning curve can be steep, but it forces you to really understand the inner workings of vectors and matrices. And if you master that, you master one of the basic tenets of MATLAB. Alright, that's the end of the demo. I hope you learned how logical operators work and how they can be substituted for things like for loops. Like all coding problems, there are multiple ways to solve this with either vectorization or with for loops. I actually did this problem about six different ways before I settled on the two methods used in this demo. See if you can find another way to vectorize the code, or if you're more comfortable with for loops, if you can find another way to write the for loop. See you soon.